three, two, one. I accidentally formatted an SD card and lost 300 video files before I could download them to my computer. Here's how I solved the situation. Hello everyone, this is Ernesto with Aftershoot and last week I was living a creator's worst nightmare. Long story short, I was flown to Chicago to shoot a ballroom dancing competition and stupid me, instead of immediately downloading the files to my computer, I just came home and went straight to shooting other things and forgot all about it. After about a week, the dance company reached out to me and said, hey, how's the video going? And I had completely forgotten about it. So I opened up my laptop and the files were not there. So then I reached out to my SD cards and it was empty. No files in the computer and no files on my SD card. As you can imagine, I was trembling. Not only had they already paid me the full amount for the event, but there were other travel expenses to consider. This was gonna be a big loss for me. Luckily, I had heard about recovery software in the past and decided to give it a try. After all, there was nothing else left for me to lose. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I recovered almost 300 video files, repaired the damaged ones and converted them so I could save my own neck. Just so you know, the recovery software will also work with photos. So pay close attention. Now, before we go into the software I use, there are a couple of things to consider. The first one is, luckily for me, I hadn't used the SD card since my trip to Chicago. I, I honestly don't know how it got formatted, but if I had kept on adding files to it, then the recovery process wouldn't have been so successful. The more you use the card, the least probable it becomes to recover files. Another thing to consider is these softwares are not free. There are some free versions, but you won't get all the options. I think I pay around $100 for a lifetime subscription for each one of them, so in my head it was a great deal. Okay, let's jump right to it. The first app I use to recover the files is called Disk Drill. It is very straightforward, really. Here I just click on the SD card and start scanning it for lost or deleted files. As you can see here in the top, you can recover pictures, videos, audios, documents, and other files. In my case, I needed to recover video files, so I clicked on videos to check the process. It's important to know that the SD card in question is obviously completely empty. So far, I can see some video files are showing up, but none with a thumbnail or anything that tells me the file is usable. And if you want to see the process or how it's all going, you can check the process bar on top. Right now, all I can do is just wait. As soon as it's done, we get all these files, all with low recovery chances. As you can see, none of them have a thumbnail to even tell me what the file is about. All I know is there's some sort of video file. All the way down, if I scroll all the way down, I can find some video files with high chances of recovery, and those do have a thumbnail, and even some information about the date they were created. And because of what I see, I can tell they are from the event I shot. There are also some other files in there from other events I've covered, but I'm just gonna save them all, no matter what the file is about, and later I can just delete the ones I don't need. So, now in this folder, we have the high recovery chance files. I got to recover 23 out of 300 total video files, which is still not enough to save my neck, but very hopeful. As you can see, the files open without any issue, but what about the low recovery chance files? Well, those files don't play. They got recovered, but they appear to be damaged. I can tell they have some sort of information in them because of how heavy they are, but there's just no way to use them because they're broken. Here's where I used a second piece of software that I'm gonna talk about, of course, in this video. It's called Wondershare Repair It. Again, this wasn't free, but I think it was also $100 for a lifetime subscription, so that was good for me. So this software is also quite simple. All you have to do is drag the files you want to repair into the window that pops up. I'm going to grab one of the files that doesn't play and I'm gonna see if it works. After that, I'm just gonna click on repair. Okay, so I appear to have some issues, so now I'm gonna click on advanced repair. After that, I get this other window asking me to drop a file that was shot with the same camera the broken file was shot with. So I'm gonna go back to the folder and use one of the recovered files, one that was working, and drop it back here, click on repair, and wait for the process. Okay, after it's done, I review the file and I discover it's not exactly what I was looking for, but I'm still happy because now I know that the repair software actually works. So all I have to do now is drag all the files and ask Wondershare to repair them all. After the software has done what it has to do, I had repaired 236 video files. So if you add the original 23 videos that I got that did not need to be repaired, I have a total of 259 video files, which is, that's amazing. 
And as you can see, they play well and have no major issues. Or so I thought. You see, they play very well on VLC, which is a media player that has basically any video codec you need, but they don't play as well on Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the software I use to edit. Now, the issue is um, they need to run on Adobe, and if you see on Adobe, they, the images just run choppy, almost as if Premiere Pro doesn't have the correct video codec to interpret the files. So what do I do now? Well, here's where I used a third piece of software, but don't worry, this one's free. Handbrake is a software that basically converts media files into different formats. Um, in order to get the files turned into videos that Premiere Pro can read, all I did was drop them into Handbrake and batch convert them. I'm not gonna go through that because it's a very simple, straightforward process, but just so you know, the software is free and it helped me convert the files into different video files that Premiere Pro could play, thus I could edit them. And that's how I went from almost dying from losing 300 video files to being able to save them and deliver the work that was required from me. Andrea, if you're watching this video, now you know why it took an extra three days, more than I had originally said to edit your video, so I'm sorry. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow After Shooting in all of our social media to always have the latest information about what we have to offer. See you guys in the next one. Bye.